All right, guys, hope everyone's well and welcome back to the Improvement Podcast. So in this episode, I'm going to touch on being all or nothing. And the reason behind this is I think it is a mistake I see a lot of people make in regards to approaching their fitness goals. That holds them back a lot and uh, leads them to eventually fail reaching their goals. It's not, the reason being is it's not sustainable being perfect every single day uh, for your goals. Uh, And if you're wanting to improve your body composition, you need to kind of be able to stay consistent even when things aren't perfect it's not about having an all or nothing approach as the name suggests it usually leads to nothing even i'm not perfect every day Uh, i think i'm close to perfect a large majority of the time but i have times where let's say i'll have a meal out uh, that's planned in of course i'll plan it in my calories but i'll have a meal out i'll have times where things will go wrong with my training uh, in terms of not having the best sessions. I will have times where, let's say, I'm up a wee bit later than usual. Saying that, that's very rare, but I still have those periods. Uh, so even even you could say I'm not all or nothing. And in terms of, yeah, why it's not ideal to be like that is it doesn't usually lead to the best results. It leads to usually falling off track uh, because you think there's not much point just because, let's say, you've had maybe a wee bit of inconsistency somewhere. But like if a, a good a good reason why it isn't the best to be all or nothing is if you imagine you are, let's say, going to work, you forget something for your lunch uh, that, that you prepared that was healthy, and then you're like, oh, I've not had that meal. My day's ruined. Then you go off to eat, let's say, something that's not great, like uh, McDonald's, you go into work, after work, you don't think there's much point in going to the gym because you've already ruined the day, quote-unquote, because you've already ate unhealthily, so there's not much point now, and you're, you're kind of just, like, encouraging other behaviours to slide just because you've not ticked one box or hit one goal, whereas what's going to put you in a better position? Let's say having one, let's say, poorer meal or having one meal that's not, let's say, on your absolutely perfect meal plan, missing, let's say, one meal, or missing a meal, a session, not hitting your steps that day, and then letting it milk into the rest of the week. I know that just hitting or just missing, let's say, one good meal and maybe getting a bit of a poor option and then going back on track right after, that's definitely going to get you better results. And even if, let's say, you don't have the most perfect food available, that doesn't mean you need to have a poor option. Like, if, let's say, you forget your meal or you aren't in a situation where you can have the perfect food choice, you can still go to McDonald's and you can get two grilled chicken wraps, which can get you a good bit of protein with low calories. So it shows you it's like when when things aren't quote-unquote optimal, when you aren't in the perfect position, when, let's say, you mess up somewhere, still tick the rest of your boxes because if, let's say, you miss one box you still tick the others. So you might not, let's say, have a great week of fat loss or a great week of, let's say, or the perfect week of building muscle, but you'll still be in a better position than if you just sack off the rest of your goals. So you yeah, don't have an all or nothing approach. And if you're if you're new to, let's say, fitness or trying to improve your body composition, I didn't start out being a robot a lot. And I'm, I'm quite maybe structured and robotic in nature now, but that's after kind of like, years of training and kind of working up to that to an extent and getting a bit more consistent over time but nobody starts out or very little people start out eating five meals a day training five times a week sleeping awake at exact same time so you don't if let's say you currently don't have much habits or positive structure in place then anything's progress so instead of thinking about being perfect just be better and consistently try and improve that over time like be one percent better every day you could try instead of let's say trying to be 100% better tomorrow eh, because that's not sustainable and again you might not let's say you people would say oh I, I want to progress at a bit of a faster rate uh, but I've got this deadline but what usually happens is you take let's say the approach that will give you your goals faster but in reality it doesn't because you can't stick to them you fall off track. So make sure what you're doing is sustainable. You're not having an all or nothing approach. So what we mean by this is if you're, let's say, had no thought about your nutrition ever and you're not used to, let's say, trying to have good, positive, healthy structure, then instead of, let's say, going from eating 
junk food for all your meals to eating healthy prepared food for every single meal just improve it slightly just get let's say have a diet coke instead of a full fat coke have let's say a healthier dinner and or just maybe get a low calorie dessert instead of a normal dessert it's like make these small changes that you can adhere to long term because when it comes to like body composition change and reaching your fitness goals it's something long term you don't let's say work really hard for eight weeks and then you're in your perfect body composition and you stay there because it takes longer than eight weeks sometimes it takes years to reach your like your desired physique so uh try and think what can i what positive changes can i make that i can maintain long term and again think about the ones that are easy to do the ones that aren't really that strenuous like swapping full fat coke for diet coke and swapping let's say full sugar ketchup to low sugar ketchup and i know it seems like small changes but if you can save let's say if you can do that with different areas save let's say 200 300 calories a day that could be enough to put you in a calorie deficit and same if you go out for dinner if you're going out for dinner and you're trying to let's say improve on your consistency you're let's say not used to trying to like worrying about your nutrition then instead of getting let's say most places have calories on the menu so take that for your advantage so if you're thinking about let's say getting a pizza or a burger get which one's low in calories it doesn't have to be the pizza or the salad because what usually happens is people go for the salad they eat that they will try and do that every time they're out for dinner they can't maintain that because let's face it it's not that tasty it's not enjoyable, especially when other, every other person's got different foods. They might be commenting on why you're getting a salad. doesn't feel great. So instead, if, let's say, you've got a pizza or a burger to choose from, go for the slightly lower calorie option. That could be enough to, again, maybe make you lose a wee bit of weight if you do that over time. And in terms of like what else you can do is like get a thin crust pizza instead of like a standard pizza. Like wee things like that, those changes can go a long way. And... and it's not about, let's say, getting the perfect option because that doesn't really allow you to stick to things long term. And a good reason why like being all or nothing is like a poor choice because if you think about it, let's say you go out for food, you are supposed to be dieting, you go over your calories by 200. That's a lot different than a 1,000 calories. Both are, let's say, over your calorie goal. Both you could say you've not been... You could class both as not being consistent to your calorie goal. But if you eat 200 calories or a thousand calories then that is obviously a thousand is five times that so you could go out for food five times be over your calories by 200 and still eat the same amount of calories throughout the week as if let's say you just went screw it and ate a thousand calories extra that one day so yeah make sure what you're doing again you can stick to and like it, it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be let's say going out for food or sticking to your meal plan that you can have some in between if that makes sense same applies to the gym if you aren't used to going to the gym don't start let's say six days a week doing something you hate in the gym start start small start what you can maintain and you can keep up so if that's three times a week if that's two times a week for let's say 30 minutes or an hour uh, instead of let's say two hours because part of like getting a habit and or part of like uh, developing a habit is making sure it's easy to stick to uh, so if let's say you you start going to the gym it's only 30 minutes three times a week once that becomes a habit you're in that routine of it you don't have to think about it it's not much of a chore you can then increase it from there because your motivation will be high you're seeing yourself be consistent and then increase it uh, because like i said if a habit's easy to stick to you're more likely to do it and then once you're in the routine and habit going to the gym you can just be like, right, I'm here, I might as well stay for longer. Whereas don't start out giving yourself something that's going to be really hard for you to stick to. And it could be if you're wanting to lose weight, st starting by, let's say, going one 10-minute walk a day. And then when that's habitual, add to it, meaning, let's say, finding out what your step average is with that 10-minute walk and then trying to increase it a further 1,000 or 2,000. Or going another walk, because all those will be habits add up. Uh, same applies with like other areas. So a good thing to try and think about is what's the smallest change I can make that I can stick to, which has the biggest results. And what I mean by that is you don't have to, let's say, mess about adding 10 steps a day to your goal just because it's going to be easier to stick to. However, if, let's say, you are consistently falling off track and not managing to stick to your goals, maybe the goals you're setting for yourself are too difficult to stick to. Maybe you 
aren't setting the right goals that will get you towards yours. Maybe the ones you are doing are maybe restrictive or just a bit far-fetched from where you're currently at. So start small with your goals uh, because like worst scenario is you will progress at a wee bit of a slower rate, but you're still heading towards your goal. People want to, let's say, reach their goal overnight, but you didn't, let's say, get into a poorer body composition overnight. You didn't put on a lot of fat overnight. Just like how you don't put it on overnight, you don't lose it overnight after. It takes patience and uh, it takes being like sensible and strategic with your goals, especially if you're someone who falls off track. If you can, let's say, be all or nothing, if you can be 100% consistent stick to it, go for it. But for most individuals, that's not sustainable, uh, which is something I see a lot. Uh, so if you are wanting help in terms of losing body fat, building muscle, you want, let's say, maybe you will put the work in, you are willing to be disciplined, but you find it hard to, let's say, know what goals are right for yourself. You maybe don't select goals that are easy to stick to just from a lack of awareness. Uh, and maybe you're spinning your wheel slightly if you want to inquire about my coaching service. I'm currently taking on clients, but hope this episode helped. Uh, slightly shorter than one than usual, but regardless, still valuable and still got some good take-homes if your goal is fat loss or building muscle. It's not about being perfect, it's about being consistent over the long run, but of course, the more consistent you are, the faster you can expect results.